Okay, so next on to more, a deeper dive into PTP and specifically uh, talking about virtualized environments, which is where a lot of us want to go in the long term, um, getting everything into uh, private and public clouds. So Alex Weinman will be um, talking about that. So take it away, Alex. Can you hear me? Oh, excellent. So first of all, thank you, Thomas, for the great presentation. Thank you all for coming here. Uh, in this presentation, we will discuss a time synchronization in media virtualized environment. If you have any questions, please feel free to stop me and ask. OK, so media and uh, entertainment industry is moving to virtualized environment to uh, private and public uh, cloud deployments. This is a very uh, natural next step to adoption of the software IP uh, solutions that are based on off-the-shelf uh, networking equipment and infrastructure, which is uh, mature and ready for virtualization. Of course, virtualization brings a lot of advantages, but it also comes with new challenges. One of the challenges is uh, time synchronization in virtualized environment. In this presentation, uh, I will start with a very basic uh, introduction to virtualized environment components. We will uh, take a look at the main uh, 702110 timing requirements. We, go, we will go over the major challenges related to timing uh, in virtualized environment and possible solutions for these challenges available today. And we, take, we also will take a look what can be done uh, looking forward. So, uh, virtualization environment. Um, very basic, very simple. Hardware virtualization is an, ab an abstraction of the uh, physical resources done by software. It decouples the uh, hardware, the physical resources, from the software component that is using it. Okay? It, it, br it brings a lot of flexibility. Host is the physical server. Uh, that hosting the virtualized environment. Virtual machine is an emulation of the physical server. It behaves like a physical server. It has, um, as you can see, uh, virtual hardware. It has guest operating system running on it and applications running on the virtual machine. Multiple virtual machines can run on the same physical server and they share the resources of the physical server and the virtual machines are isolated one from each other. Hypervisor is a component that decouples the uh, physical resources, the physical hardware from the virtual machine. It allocates, it schedules, executes virtual machines, it allocates and shares resources for virtual machines. There are two major types of hypervisor. One is uh, bare metal, as you can see here. It sits directly uh, and um, directly manages the hardware and host the hypervisor. It sits on top of operating system and needs operating system to access the hardware. Okay, IO virtualization modes. There are three major types. The first one is full virtualization. In this mode, we have unmodified guest software. The same software that is running on a native uh, environment is running in virtualized environment. It thinks that it can directly access the hardware. It thinks it can uh, fully control the hardware. However, when it do an I/O request, try to access the hardware, there is an exception which is trapped by hypervisor which emulates the I/O request. The performance of trap and emulate is high, so the performance of this mode is poor. However, it provides the highest level of abstraction and the most uh, flexible virtual virtualization solution. In paravirtualization, we have um, modified guest software, which is aware that is running in virtual, uh, uh, on top of hypervisor. So when it wants to do an I/O, it is doing calling an hyper call, and the hypervisor is accessing the hardware for the virtual machine and do the I/O request. So this mode reduces the trap and emulate, so it improves the performance. On the other side, it doesn't provide the best performance because still we need to go through hypervisor to access the hardware. 
And the last one is direct I.O. In direct I.O., you can get the best performance because in direct I.O., the guest, the virtual machine, can directly access the hardware it, by passing the hypervisor. So we can get a near native performance. There's two major types in direct I.O. The first one is pass-through. In pass-through mode, um, a single virtual machine is owning the device. Not, a, not the host, it, all the other virtual machines on the same physical server cannot access the device. In SRIOV mode, we have a single PCIe device which is partitioned into multiple logical devices. We have a physical function which allows to fully control the device. It is a fully capable PCIe device, and it is usually associated with a trusted entity, such as host. And have virtual function, with, which is a lightweight function, PCIe device. It allows to do now, it allows to send and receive packets directly by accessing the hardware, but it doesn't allow to fully control the device. And uh, virtual function is usually associated with virtual machine. So in SRLB mode, we allow virtual machines to directly send and receive packets by directly ac accessing the device and get a near native performance. At the same time, the same device can be used by multiple virtual machines. Same to 2110 timing requirements. So first of all, the time synchronization must be done uh, using a PTP. PTP is a, a time synchronization protocol over a network. The time is distributed using uh, through uh, PTP messages. Um, the, the PTP allows to achieve a side microsecond synchronization accuracy. SEMTI 2059 is the protocol which is a glue between PTP and the uh, SEMTI 2110. It defines the PTP profile that must be supported, which is 2059-2. It defines the epoch time. It defines the media uh, signal gen generation timing, which must be based on PTP. So in order, 2110 transmitter will be able to generate media signals to, to send, for example, video packets on the right time, it must use a local clock which is synchronized to a PTP Grandmaster. The performance requirements are uh, plus minus 500 nanosecond offset uh, from the master clock, and the synchronization must be achieved within a uh, five seconds. It is important to emphasize that for ultra high definition streams, a side microsecond accuracy is really critical and needed. In this slide, I would, uh, I would like to show in a very simplified way, and I re removed a lot of details, how does PTP slave calculates offset from the master clock to fix, it, to fix its clock. So let's take a look at the example. So we have a master time, master clock, and slave clock, right? And there is a shift between master clock and the slave clock of three ticks. As you can see, at time point three, according to master time, the time at the slave clock is six. Right, so three ticks offset. At time point six, according to master clock, the master is sending a sync message which comes to tell to slave, hey, my time now is such and such, for example, six ticks. So the master takes a transmit timestamp and transmits a sync message to the slave. Probably as you know, in two-step mode, we also have a follow-up message which comes to tell when the sync message was actually transmitted, but let's put it aside. In any way, the sync message which tells to the slave what is the time of the master is transmitted to, to the slave and it takes six ticks to the slave to arrive from the master to the slave. This is a latency between the master and the slave. So the message arrives to the slave at time point 15 ticks. Now the slave knows when the message was transmitted because it sees the message, uh, the, uh, the message transmission time, six. It also, the slave also takes the receive timestamp when the message was received. It, it, it takes a receive timestamp and it knows that the message was received at the slave at time point 15. Okay, so again, it's, it, uh, the slave knows the time when the message was transmitted. It knows the time when the message was received. And if the slave will know the latency it can calculate the offset from the master. Okay, how? Six 
transmission time according to master's uh, clock, plus latency, how much it takes to arrive from master to slave, gives us 12 ticks. So slave knows that at time point 15, when the message was received at the slave, according to slave clock, the time at the master was 12 ticks. And the offset is 15 minus 12, which is three. In other words, the slave can calculate the offset by taking receive timestamp at the slave clock, according to slave clock, minus transmit timestamp of the master clock, minus latency. How does slave know the latency? This is a very really interesting question. Uh, slave takes, calculates the uh, RTT, which is round trip time, and divides it, it by two. In this slide, I do not show uh, all the messages that are needed to calculate RTT. Basically, we have delayed request, delayed response, but basically RTT is master to slave plus slave to master latency, round trip time. So this actually wor works very well. Assuming that the latency between master and slave and slave to and master is the same. If master to slave latency equals to slave to master latency, the calculated latency is accurate and calculated offset is accurate. But if they are not symmetric and equal, the calculated latency is not accurate. And the calculated offset eventually is not accurate enough. PTP packets time stepping has a big impact on the calculated latency and calculated offset. There are two major types of time stamping. One is software-based. In software-based, uh, um, the stack or network stack or the application are taking the latency of the transmission or reception of PTP packets. It is not ac accurate enough because of the software stack jitter. The second one is hardware-based time stamping of PTP packets. Uh, the, the FI or MAC layer are taking the timestamp, and the accuracy that can be achieved is very accurate of a nanosecond. It is important to emphasize, in order to achieve a side microsecond accuracy in synchronization, hardware time stamping is a must. Okay, so let's take a look at the main challenges related to uh, synchronization in virtualized environment. So as I said before, virtualization brings a lot of advantages. On the other side, it has implications and costs. We have extra sof software overhead. We have additional software layers involved. We have increased contention on the physical resources. We have multiple virtual machines sharing the same resources, the same physical resources of the same physical server. We have higher stack jitter. We have higher PTP traffic load, because think, we have multiple virtual machines on the same physical server, and each one is running PTP client, so we have increased load of PTP traffic. And also, not all the hardware features that can improve performance can be exposed and utilized by virtual machine. All this impacts the performance of PTP synchronization in virtualized environment. For example, the PTP ti software time stepping is less accurate, and there is a higher risk to exhaust the grandmaster clock because we have more PTP clients that it must serve. In the next, in the next slides, I will go over a possible solution for these challenges that allows uh, to uh, provide a near native performance also for virtual machines. So let's begin from a Linux KVM virtual PTP. So how it works, uh, on, the, on the host, we, so we have a Linux host, Linux guest, and we have KVM hypervisor here. On the Linux host, we are running PTP daemon that can utilize Actually, it is host, so it can utilize hardware time stepping. It can directly access the hardware, and it can utilize Linux uh, interface that allows to synchronize PTP hardware clock on the NIC, okay, PHC. It can uh, adjust frequency and offset of the uh, clock on the NIC because uh, Linux has such an in in interface. So we're running PTP daemon on the host. It can utilize all the feature and achieve a very high level of synchronization. And this PTP daemon is synchronizing the clock the system clock of the host, okay? On the guest here, we are exposing a para-virtualized PTP clock. I read from this clock, when you read from this clock, there is an hyper call to the hypervisor, to KVM, KVM hypervisor. Hypervisor reads the host clock, the host system clock, and returns the host system clock to the uh, apl application which asks for the time. So reading from this PTP clock on the guest 
is returning reading the host clock. In addition, we are running a tool that's synchronizing the system clock of the guest to the PTP clock, to the para-virtualized PTP clock. For example, for example, it can be Chrony D or PHC to Sys, it doesn't matter. So what do we have here? We are actually, in this solution, we are synchronizing the system clock of the guest through para-virtualized PTP clock to the system clock of the host. And since, and since system clock of the host is accurately synchronized, we get, in a, a very, uh, we get a very accurate synchronization on the guest. This, uh, this solution allows to reach tens of nanosecond performance uh, uh, for uh, virtual machines. Just a single PTP stack is required here for entire uh, uh, physical server. Of course, it requires support of hardware timestamping by the hardware, by the NIC. But this solution is limited to Linux hypervisor, Linux KVM hypervisor, and to uh, Linux guest. So what about other hypervisors? Virtualized Linux PTP hardware clock. So what we do here? We enable SRIOV, so we have uh, virtu virtual functions associated with virtual machines. We expose through the virtual function, th uh, through the virtual functions, uh, the clock of the NIC directly to virtual machine. On the guest, on the virtual machine, we are running PTP daemon. Uh, for example, we are running Linux operating system that supports hardware timestamping and PTP hardware clock. So this PTP daemon on each virtual machine can access the hardware clock of the NIC, use hardware timestamping because it has direct access to the hardware, and it can synchronize the clock of the guest in a very accurate manner because it can utilize the hardware timestamping. Okay, uh, since we have a single PTP hardware clock on the NIC, uh, the virtual machine on, uh, is not allowed to modify it. It's just uh, uh, allowed to read the clock. So how does it get the, the PTP time? For that, it manages a, a logical PTP hardware clock, logical clock. Uh, actually, a logical clock, for, uh, it is a, for that it needs to uh, manage PTP coefficients that allows to transform the clock of the NIC to the PTP time. This is a simple uh, linear equation. Okay, so again, on, on, which, each virtual, on each virtual machine, we are running PTP daemon. Since we have a, a Linux guest, for example, we can utilize the hardware timestamping, and we can directly synchronize the PTP hardware clock and the system clock of the virtual machine uh, on, uh, on, on each virtual machine. Uh, this solution allows to reach performance of tens of nanoseconds. It, it requires SROV support, and it requires uh, ability to expose the, uh, the clock of the NIC to the virtual machines. The, uh, the disadvantage of this solution is that it, it requires multiple, virtual, multiple sorry, PTP clients, PTP client per each virtual machine. So we have higher tra uh, high load of PTP traffic here. In addition, this solution requires from the guest to support uh, hardware timestamping and PTP hardware clock. So what about guest operating system that, that uh, don't support hardware timestamping? For example, Windows. So let's take a look what do we have for, for Windows today. Currently, Windows doesn't support hardware timestamping for PTP packets. This is planned for future Windows releases. So due to this limitation, the achievable accuracy of PTP synchronization for Windows is limited. According to our, our testing for native windows, the achievable accuracy is good enough for high definition, but we, get, we, sh we saw a limited performance for ultra high definition streams. For virtual machines running windows, the achievable accuracy of PTP synchronization is not good even for high definition streams. So, I would like to demonstrate to you uh, a virtual, uh, virtualized PTP solution. This solution allows to overcome this challenge and to get a near native performance also for Windows virtual machines. So how does it work? We are running a single Linux virtual machine that can utilize the Linux capabilities. Linux supports hardware timestamping. By the way, we enable SROV, and we expose through virtual functions the PTP hardware clock of the NIC directly to virtual machines. But a single virtual machine that is running Linux 
disciplines the PTP hardware clock of the NIC by directly accessing the hardware clock of the NIC through virtual function. Since it is SROV, since it is a Linux, and we have hardware timestamping, this allows to uh, synchronize the hardware clock of the NIC in a, very in a very accurate way. Okay, so we have a single PTP hardware clock owner running Linux, and it disciplines and synchronizes the PTP hardware clock of the NIC for the entire physical server. All the other virtual machines just read the synchronized clock through virtual function. They do not need to run any PTP daemon. They just have an access and can read directly the synchronized PTP hardware clock, the synchronized clock, by directly reading it through virtual function. We also need a timing library to expose the PTP time to the applications. We implemented this solution using Rivermax. Rivermax is Mellanox uh, SDK for uh, media and entertainment uh, industry. We added a timing API to Rivermax uh, that exposes the, P the, the PTP time, the, hard uh, the PTP hardware clock time directly to applications. On the Linux virtual machine, we run PTP4L to synchronize the PTP hardware clock of the NIC. Okay? So here we discipline from Linux virtual machine, we discipline the PTP hardware clock of the NIC, and we expose the PTP hardware clock of the NIC through virtual function to virtual machines, for example, Windows. And we expose the time, the PTP time, a very accurate PTP time, using Rivermax timing uh, API to applications. So the uh, measured uh, performance is tens of nanosecond for Windows virtual machines. This solution requires that a single, only a single uh, virtual machine and PTP daemon that needs, that needs a single core to execute the PTP daemon. Uh, so we have a minimal PTP traffic per server. You don't need to run multiple PTP clients. You need to support SROV. And you need to support uh, exposure of the uh, clock of the, uh, of the NIC through virtual function to virtual machines. And of course, uh, the, the NIC must support hardware timestamping. This solution requires a dedicated library to expose the time, the PTP time to applications. This functionality was added to Rivermax, as I, I explained before. This solution uh, uh, should be able to support different guest operating systems and different hypervisors. Uh, two words about looking forward. So uh, additional enhancement that we are ev evaluating uh, today is instead of running the PTP client on the uh, virtual machine or even on the host, we take PTP client and put it into the, into the NIC. For example, Mellanox Smart NIC. So, and, uh, and again, we enable SROV and we expose the PTP hardware clock to virtual machines directly through virtual function. But instead of a doing a, a synchronization, doing, um, instead, of doing a, a, instead of having a PTP daemon that disciplines the hardware clock from virtual machine, the work is done by the PTP daemon running on the NIC. It disciplines the hardware clock, and virtual machines just read the synchronized clock through virtual function. Okay, in this solution, uh, we expect to get a very accurate synchronization. Uh, this solution is agnostic to host capabilities, to host noise. If you have interrupts, uh, a scheduler preemption, we are not impacted by it because the solution, the PTP client, is packaged inside the NIC. Uh, this solution should be good enough both for native and virtualized environment. Uh, we have a single PTP daemon required uh, for uh, multiple virtual machines. It can be good also for Linux, also for Windows, the same solution. This solution uh, a, should provide an easy and fast integration because you do not need to deal to, uh, you know, to, to tune the PTP client on the host, on the guest. You have the solution ready on the NIC. So that's all uh, from my side at this stage. Uh, if you have any questions, you are really uh, wel welcome to ask them now. You're also welcome to visit us uh, at our booth uh, at Hall 8, booth E21. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. OK, do we have any questions? Yeah. yeah you can ask that now and after. Okay, You're welcome, guys. Questions? Yeah, we're, we're, um, we're set. Anybody have any questions?
Okay. Um, that's good enough. Thank you very much, Hans. Thank you very much. And, and um, thanks for your presentation. Yeah.